study about creation. And I want to talk about something related to creation that's not even mentioned in the account of creation. What does creation teach us about Jesus Christ? It's really fascinating when you consider what the New Testament scriptures tell us about Jesus. For example, in the Gospel of John, chapter 1, John tells us that Jesus Christ was in the beginning. In the beginning, he says, was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. The Apostle John therefore describes Jesus as he who was the Creator. He was with God back in the creation. And of course, in Genesis chapter 1, we have a very strange statement that is made there. And that strange statement seems to be explained by what John tells us in John chapter 1. There in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, God had said, Let us make man in our image. Let us make man. In our image. Who was the Father talking to? Who was the other person who was there? Well, according to John, it was Jesus Christ. He was with the Father in the creation, and he was involved in the creation. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was this tells us that Jesus Christ was the creator of everything that exists. A little later we're going to read a passage from Paul that tells us that, that even the heavenly beings were created by Jesus Christ. Everything was created by him. That's why in John the 17th chapter in verse 5, Jesus was praying to his father shortly before his arrest and trial. And in that prayer, he said, Father, glorify me with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Jesus admitted that he had been with the Father before the world was, and that he desired to return to that glory and honor that he had with the Heavenly Father. And then in 1 John chapter 1, John begins his epistle referring to that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, our hands and handle of the word of life. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it and bear witness, and show you that eternal life which was with the Father and was manifested unto us. This life is the life of Jesus Christ. <coughs> he was eternal, he was with the Father, and he was involved in creation. But our text this morning was Colossians chapter 1. We want to spend some time there because Paul in Colossians 1 tells us some things about Jesus that are really remarkable. Paul tells us in Colossians chapter 1 about God saving us through the blood of Jesus Christ. He tells us in verse 13 that we have been delivered from the power of darkness and have been translated into the kingdom of his dear son. Jesus' kingdom was available to the Christians of the first century. Jesus' kingdom was then. Already Christians had been translated out of the power of darkness and into Christ's kingdom. But as he describes Christ, he says, it is in him we have redemption his blood, even the forgiveness of sin, who is the image of the invisible God. The word image that's found here is a Greek word which refers to a perfect expression and representative of the original. In other words, the image of God is the essence of God. And Jesus Christ is referred to as having that essence of God. The image, and then to say he's the image of the <coughs> invisible God, and the invisible God refers to the God who is the Spirit. God who is the Spirit and 
it's always been fascinating to me that many religions teach otherwise about Jesus Christ. For example, the Jehovah's Witness persuasion maintains that Jesus was Michael the Archangel and that he was different from all the other angels in that he was superior to them. When he was born, he left all his angelic qualities behind so that he became totally flesh. But Jehovah's Witnesses believe that at the resurrection, Jesus again became Michael, the archangel. So as far as Jehovah's Witnesses are concerned, Jesus was never God. He was an angel, he became a man, and he becomes an angel again. This the scriptures do not teach. Jesus is God. He was God. John 1, verses 1 and 2. But again, the Mormons, and the more you study the Mormon religion, the more strange it seems, they believe that Jesus Christ was created by God and that his brother is Satan, and that Jesus and Satan have been at odds one with another all throughout history. They believe that the physical body of Jesus was just that, a physical body. So, Jehovah's Witnesses do not believe that Jesus is God. They do not believe that he created all things, and yet the Bible plainly has stated those things in our hearing even this morning. Going back to Colossians 1 and verse 16. For by him were all things created, things in heaven and earth, visible, invisible, thrones, dominions, principalities, powers, all things were created by him and for him. This means that there is nothing in existence today that's not here because of Jesus Christ. Wow. Remarkable statement that is. Not just did God create the heavens and the earth, but Jesus Christ was the creator of all things. And maybe this helps to explain why in John chapter 1 and verse 13, John would say he came unto his own, and his own received him not. Think about this for a moment, and it, it really expands the mind out to places maybe we can't completely comprehend. Is there anything that you have ever made in your life that you'd be willing to become? Is there anything you have ever created in any fashion that you would be willing to become? Think about this for a moment. Jesus Christ created all things. He came unto his own, not only to his own, the Jewish people, of which he was kin, but his own as far as those who he had created. Now, actual creation is never a word that's used of anything man would do. We can't make something out of nothing. That's what creation means. But Jesus created everything from nothing. And then he was willing to become flesh like his creation. That is hard for the mind to wrap around. In one of the books written by C.S. Lewis, he gives this illustration, and I think it lacks some even at that. But he said, imagine yourself agreeing to become a slug. Now, the problem with that is we didn't create the slug, so it's not going to work for us. But God created everything and then chose to put on flesh and blood and became one of his creation. Do you know how unreasonable that is? Do you know how subservient that is? Do you realize how humbling that is? Jesus Christ created everything and then stepped back and as a tiny baby came into that created world. Wow. Why did he ever choose that? You know, it's one thing for us to say that somebody loved us and died for us. It'd be one thing for us to say a great teacher lived and he was willing to sacrifice.
sacrifice everything that we might understand more about life. But it's another matter when it comes to Almighty God, the Creator, stooping down to help us poor feeble folk here on earth. What love and humility that would require. And so Jesus created all things. Everything in heaven, everything on earth, everything in the universe, everything in existence. And notice it says everything was created by him and for him. And I've always been fascinated, fascinated by these phrases. The word for him means to be joined with. It means to create into him or to him. In some way, the creation was for Jesus. It was something that was done because of him. It was joined to him by Almighty God. And then it says, for him. Literally, to be made for him. The world was made for Jesus. Now, what does that mean? That means that every one of us here this morning are here because of Jesus. We're here because in some way Jesus wanted us here. Everything in this world is presently here because in some fashion Jesus desired it. It was for him, it was by him, and without him has really no meaning. You see, the entire creation is Christ-centered. He is at the core of everything. He made the worlds. He made us. And we were made for him. That's hard to imagine, isn't it? That would ever be the case. He is before all things, verse 17, and by him all things consist. The word consist means to hold together. Jesus is what holds everything together. Now that's interesting because this word is also found in Peter's words. When Peter referred to how the universe is going in. We turn our Bibles to uh, 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 5. And you can read along with me, 2 Peter 3 and verse 5. Peter says, For this they willingly are ignorant of, that by the word of God the heavens were created of old, and the earth standing out of the water and in the water. The word standing there is the same Greek word we read in Colossians 1.17 for consist. Notice the earth and the water consisted, were held together in that old world that God created. Now the flood occurred when that holding together was removed. And it all fell apart. It stopped being connected. Properly. The world then, when it stopped being consistent, was overflowed with water and the world perished. This is the same word that Paul uses in Colossians 1 when he said, All things consist with Christ. That means that he holds everything in place, and one day when he gives the word, boom, it will cease to exist. It will be gone. What is now will be no longer. That will be the end of time. And isn't it interesting that that is always described by the apostles as the coming of the Lord. 
sits by him. That's remarkable. And because he holds everything together, verse 18 becomes even more significant. And he is the head of the church. The church doesn't belong to some great religious prophet or teacher. The church is not the result of some human entity. The church is not even the result of the visit of an angel or a group of angels. The church is here because of he who holds all things together. And he is the head of the church. He runs everything else. Everything consists in him. Why should he not be over the church? Makes sense. He created. The Bible speaks of us as Christians as the firstborn from the dead. Those that Jesus gave life to. He created us anew in our obedience to his gospel. And he made us just as he created us in the beginning. So that the church becomes that over which he has the preeminence. And that's why I can't imagine anyone suggesting that any human being or any existent creature try to take the church away from Jesus. Can't be done. Can't be done. He's so powerful, he made everything. You're not going to fight against Jesus and win. You're not going to take something that belongs to him and make it belong to a human being. And when Jesus said, I will build my church, then all creation needs to fall aside to the side. He spoke it. He's in charge. He's holding everything together. And he can let everything go. He is my Lord and Savior. How powerful that is. I do not serve a great prophet or a great teacher. I do not serve someone who is of flesh and blood. I serve Jehovah God who made all things. The image of God in 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, and verse 4. The Apostle Paul writes in the second epistle to the Corinthians, chapter 4, and verse 4, and whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on. When we have seen Jesus, we have seen God. <coughs> Jesus is the perfect expression and representation of the Father. One commentator, written by a man by the name of Lydon, says of this phrase, it literally means him of whose essence he is an adequate imprint of God. Another term is used in Philippians 2 and verse 6 to refer to Jesus. Yet he did not think this he thought was to be eagerly clung, clung to. 
of that form, so he might assume the form of the servant. Technically, what Paul is saying is, Jesus was in the form of God, he became the form of a man, a servant. He took this and said, that's what I am, but I can become this. I don't know that the human brain will ever fathom what it is that Jesus came up with. This phrase, he emptied himself. How deep does that go? How wide a chasm does that explain? How empty did Jesus make himself? To think that Almighty God who created the universe and was holding the universe together would allow himself a physical body that would suffer and die on a Roman cross in the agony and pain that that entails. And he chose it. He chose it. He emptied himself. In John 10, Jesus made the statement, I lay it down of myself. No man takes it of me. You think somebody could kill the Almighty God that created everything? No way. You can't kill God. They didn't kill the essence of Jesus, who is God. But they took his form, the form of a servant, they hung that on the cross, and that form died. Just because Jesus wanted to, he laid it down of himself. I can't help but stand and marvel at who Jesus is. All that he has done. And why did he count me worth anything? Why did he come and die in the form of flesh to give me hope? Because the whole creation was his. It was made by him. It was made for him. And yet he came and he touched our lives and he suffered at all points like as we are yet without sin so that he might be the perfect redeemer that allows one day to be with God in eternity. This morning, we read about the creation, think about Jesus. What an awesome thought that as Jesus' body gave up the ghost on the cross. His spirit was holding the universe together, even as he died. And he did that for me. And he did that for you. And in him we have the forgiveness of sins through his blood. And because of him, we have the church. Those who are obedient to the gospel may be part of that body of Christ. We might belong to Him who owns everything. You're here this morning. We would urge you to put your faith in Jesus Christ as God. Be willing to turn from those things that would cause God to suffer. Those things that are wrong in His sight. Confess Jesus as Lord and Master creator of all it is, and then make that change, <clears throat> turning from sin and turning toward God, and going through a symbolic burial and resurrection, that you might be one of His as you live out the rest of your life. We urge you to do that, because Jesus is God, as we stand together as we stand.